Look to your covenant, O Lord, and do not forget the life of your poor ones forever. Arise and defend your cause, and forget not the cries of those who seek you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. My brothers and sisters, just as I was coming out, my family has been texting all morning since about 6 o'clock this morning, sending pictures and memories of uh, this day so many years ago, 19 years ago. And just before coming out, I texted. My mother said, remember that day we went there and the sun was setting as we stood at the top of the World Trade Center? We were just little, like maybe I was maybe 10 years old. The towers were only a couple of years old. And I said, yes, I said to Uncle Frank, you know, uh, how did they build this so high? And he said, one floor at a time. <laughs> Never forget that moment, that sunset. Never forget the days of driving up and seeing the sun glistening off those towers. Never forget standing at the foot of those towers and thinking of all those who were lost in that rubble of that terrible, horrible day 19 years ago. Thank you for being here to offer this Holy Mass and to remember all those who gave their lives this day. Let us now acknowledge our sins that we may worthily celebrate these sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contract of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You stand at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, who in your inscrutable providence Will that the church be united to the sufferings of your Son. Grant, we pray, to your faithful who suffer for your namesake a spirit of patience and charity, that they may be found true and faithful witnesses to the promises you have made. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. <coughs> A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, if I preach the gospel, this is no reason for me to boast, for an obligation has been imposed on me. And woe to me if I do not preach it. If I do so willingly, I have a recompense. But if unwillingly, then I have been entrusted with a stewardship. What then is my recompense? that when I preach, I offer the gospel free of charge, so as not to make full use of my right in the gospel. Although I am free in regard to all, I have made myself a slave to all, so as to win over as many as possible. I have become all things to all to save at least some. All this I do for the sake of the gospel, so that I too may have a share in it. Do you not know that the runners in the stadium all run in the race, but only one wins the prize? Run so as to win. Every athlete exercises discipline in every way. They do it to win a perishable crown, but we an imperishable crown. But we are, thus I do not run aimlessly. I do not fight as if I were shadow boxing. No. I drive my body and train it for fear that, after having preached to others, I myself should be disqualified. The word of the Lord. <laughs> How lovely is your dwelling place, Lord mighty God. My soul yearns and pines for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh cry out for the living God. How lovely is your dwelling place, Lord, mighty God. Even the sparrow finds a home, and the swallow a nest in which she puts her young. Your altars, O Lord of hosts, my King and my God. How lovely is your dwelling place, Lord, mighty God. 
Blessed are they who dwell in your house. Continually they praise you. Blessed the men whose strength you are. Their hearts are set upon the pilgrimage. For a sun and a shield is the Lord God. Grace and glory be he bestows. The Lord withholds no good thing from those who walk in sincerity. Consecrate us in the truth. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus told his disciples a parable. Can a blind person guide a blind person? Will not both fall into a pit? No disciple is superior to the teacher. When fully trained, every disciple will be like his teacher. Why do you notice the splinter in your brother's eye but do not perceive the wooden beam in your own eye? How can you say to your brother, Brother, let me remove the splinter in your eye when you do not even notice the wooden beam in your own eye? You hypocrite, remove the wooden beam from your eye first then you will see clearly to remove the splinter in your brother's eye. The Gospel of the Lord. When I read this first line this morning, no disciple is superior to the teacher. And I thought back to many years ago, back in 1986, when I first became a friar, I was 19 years old. Yes, I'm 53. And uh, just a kid when I became a Franciscan, and I lived in New York City on 31st Street at St. John's Church. Two blocks away was St. Francis Church, also run by a different group of Franciscans, another branch of the order. So I was maybe two, three weeks there. I was freshly there and you know, all excited. And I said, let me go down to confession over at St. Francis Church down the block. So I walk two blocks to St. Francis Church and I'm in confession and I sit down and I say, forgive me, Father. And it was the old confessional with the sliding doors, you know. So I said, forgive me, Father, for I've sinned. It's been whatever, two weeks since my last confession. I'm a postulate with the Franciscans down the street. And all of a sudden, the little confessional door to the screen slammed and echoed through the church. And then it opened a little bit and he said, just kidding. <laughs> I never forget how joyful that priest was and how even though he took sin serious and even though he was a true and wonderful, wonderful priest, he always had joy. And he was a man who would serve people so beautifully and sometimes the most tragic situations, but always had a sense of joy about him. And I never forgot that important lesson of joy. Like you, many, many years ago on September 11th, I remember where I was and what I was doing. I was in Ohio at the Franciscan University of Steubenville, and my friend called me up and said, turn the TV on, and plane hit the towers. And I ran downstairs, I turned the TV on, thinking it was some sort of little Fresno jet that hit it and bounced off like when the plane hit the uh, Empire State Building years and years ago. And I thought I was watching a rerun a few minutes later when I saw the second plane come in and hit the towers. And like you, I just stood there most of the day staring at the television, trying to calculate in my head the amount of people who worked in those towers, over 50,000 the hundreds of thousands that pass through the towers each and every day on the subways, and I, I couldn't just pull together how many lives may have been lost as I'm watching the towers burn. And like you, I fell to my seat when I saw the towers fall. Never in my wildest dreams would I see these beautiful symbols of New York fall to the ground and crumble like pancakes as if it was just nothing. These beautiful towers that would turn 
silver in the morning as the sun rose and gold at night when the sun set. These beautiful towers that, as I said, which I would stand upon as a child and watch the sun set upon them and how beautiful that was. I began to not only think about numbers, but all of a sudden names came to mind. My uncle Frank, who worked across the street. My friend Joe, who was a fireman whose firehouse protected the towers. And I stood there for so long, and I'll never forget watching the video of them carrying out Father Michael Judge, the confessor, my confessor. Like all the firemen and the policemen, Father Michael Judge wasn't running out of the towers, he was running in. They were running in to pull people out, he was running in to prepare them for death to anoint them to do what a priest does best. Sure, Michael had some, Father Michael had some struggles in life. He was a great confessor, but I also knew that he was also a man of great charity. And how beautiful that this priest died among the firemen whom he was a chaplain to for many years, just trying to bring consolation to souls as they died. I couldn't take it anymore, and I decided with a priest friend, we'd drive through the night and get to New York City. And I arrived on the scene. I was handed a helmet, gloves, goggles, mask, far more complex than what you're wearing now because it's, the smell in the air was never unforgettable. The taste of the air was horrendous. Trying to breathe in the midst of the dust, the stench, hard to even explain what it smelled like. Seeing fire trucks twisted, cars toppled, it was like a movie scene, surreal, worse than a war scene, I would think. I asked where I can help. I was directed down to the towers and talking to the lieutenants. They said, Father, they need help at the morgue. It was a makeshift morgue set up with a tent. and It was a deacon had been sitting there for hours upon hours, and he was covered in soot. This poor deacon had seen so much, and he handed me his holy water bottle, his prayers for the dead, and said, I'm going home. You got this. And for the next four days, 20 hours a day, my friend and I would stand, either one of us at the pile, one at the morgue, and we would speak to and pray with the firemen and policemen. And every time a body bag came through, it was opened, we'd pray the prayer for the dead and bless the body, or whatever remains were there. It was amazing to watch the firemen coming in from all over the country clean uniforms, a, shoulder, a, sh a shovel over their shoulder with a skip to the ske step. And then you would see them hours later wandering aimlessly, covered in soot, not knowing what to do and how to handle it. One moment really stands out for me very strongly. I was talking to a lieutenant and we were standing there together talking a bit about faith and so forth and we're staring at the pile. He had lost so many of his own firemen in that pile. Flames were shooting out of various spots, steel melting. It was like looking into a pit of hell. And the fireman looked at me and he said, Father, with this evil, there must be a God greater than it. There must be. I never forget that reflection that there we were standing in the midst of one of the most evil acts in history. 3,000, over 3,000 people lost their lives in New York, not to mention those who lost their lives in the Pentagon and in the fields of Pennsylvania. Men and women who gave their lives to save the president and to save any further death. And here he was looking at this pile. And instead of being filled with anger and rage, which he had every right to feel, his mind was drawn to God, that there must be a God greater than such evil. Not long after that, they found the steel cross. This piece of steel melted, to, melted together that formed a perfect cross that the firemen then raised over the pile. One of the firemen said to me, Father, this is two symbols for us. One, God is with us. Secondly, this is nothing more than a graveyard. It truly was because after the first day, no more than 20 people came out of that pile alive. There were so many heroes that day, so many men and women who gave their lives, rescuing other lives, police officers, first responders, firemen, regular lay people, priests, so many heroes of that day who risked their lives, who gave their lives for the sake of others. There was heroes in friendship, 
two men, the story of the two men in the towers on the stairwell calling their families and they, he wouldn't leave the fellow in the wheelchair. He was gonna stay with him to the very end and he did. Heroism of friendship that he would not let this man die alone in those towers. So many tragic stories of those days. But yet what we saw was so beautiful of a nation coming together, standing side by side. I think today when I see these riots in the streets and I see all these horrible things going on, this quote unquote division, and I think to myself, we have forgotten. We have forgotten the message of unity and power that came to us that day. New York was such a strange time then. People looked at each other. That doesn't happen in New York. They waved to each other, they said hello. Firemen would be buying something, getting stuff for themselves, and the person behind them would say, I got it, go on. It was so kind, the kindness was incredible. It was such an amazing time. One cop said to me, he says, Father, I'm driving down here, and everybody's lined up in the streets, they're waving to me, they're clapping. I'm looking at my badge, am I still a New York City cop? I'm not used to seeing all five fingers. <laughs> Have we forgotten the beautiful message of this day? That in tragedy we stood together so strong as one nation under God. We felt so indivisible. Today I pray for our country particularly that we remember the lost and the fallen. We remember the heroism. We remember the beauty of those who laid down their lives. We also remember the patriotism of this day. Remember what it was like to stand shoulder to shoulder. Black, white, Hispanic, Oriental. It didn't matter. We were not members of various races on this day. We were members of one race, the human race. Whether you were black or white or Hispanic or Oriental, you were covered in white dust at ground zero. It blotted out any distinction, to, uh, anything, any distinction. So many men and women who remember that day and how important it is for us to remember. But we don't belong to one particular race of black or white or Hispanic or Oriental or whatever. We belong to the one human race, the human race. And that never should we ever inflict evil on one another. But we should always seek to truly care, to truly love one another, defend each other, protect each other, seek the good of the other. Today, we remember the fallen. Remember those who suffered because of this evil act today, those who've lost family members and loved ones, children who never knew their parents. We remember those who've died after it because they died from breathing in those horrible fumes that cancer and other various diseases because of what they breathed in. And let me tell you, it was bad. I was coughing up gunk until April, gunk out of my lungs. Remember all those who continue to suffer from it. And let us never forget that we are truly one nation under God. And we should stand indivisible as one nation. And we should fight for the liberty of all. That we should do our best to make sure that everyone has the right to life, liberty, and that pursuit of happiness. As our Declaration of Independence says, these are God-given rights. May we remember this day, the beauty of love that was shown to us in the midst of that evil. And remember that no matter how evil evil can be, God is always greater than it. May God bless you and Mary keep you. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. For through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life.
Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive, we ask, O Lord, the prayers and sacrificial gifts we offer in humility, and grant that those who suffer persecution for the faithful service to you may rejoice to be united to the sacrifice of Christ your Son, and may know that their names are written in heaven among the company of the elect, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Amen. It is to be right and just our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks, most holy Father. Through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin, fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion, so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with angels and all the saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all glory. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord, Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation. 
giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Benedict, our Pope Emeritus, Robert, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. With the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our day, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. The kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. We live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, take away the sins of God, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, take away the sins of God, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, take away the sins of God, have Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should have been my life, but only say the word and my soul shall be heard.
everyone who acknowledges me before others, I will acknowledge before my Heavenly Father, says the Lord. Let us pray. By the power of the sacrament, O Lord, confirm your servants in the truth and grant to your faithful who suffer tribulation, that as they follow your Son and bear in their cross, they may in every trial glory in the name of Christian, through Christ our Lord. I did mention Mahomet that my, my uh, uncle did survive. He, was, he walked home from uh, New York City to Queens. He walked through all that dust and stuff. And my friend, the fireman, uh, he wasn't working that day. He had switched with somebody else but because uh, he had a dentist appointment or something. But I did wind up seeing him at 3 o'clock in the morning when I was there. And his particular firehouse lost many, many men. And they throughout the night were recovering their own men and when they finally got their last guy out his lieutenant gave me a hug and said father all my men are now accounted for I'm going home and so uh, everybody that I knew except Father Michael Judge did survive but there was some a couple of quick comedy of two real quick comedy that was kind of funny one of the cops said he says father I'm patrolling making sure nobody's looting and I see a bar window smashed open and I hear all this hooting and hollering inside so I draw my gun I turn around I point it in the bar and I say freeze it was four firemen having a drink. I said, what did you do? I had a drink with them. <laughs> so there was a little bit of lightheartedness just to try to make it through uh, that day. I just want to tell you real quickly, real quickly, Father Michael Judge, you know, and they took his body out of the towers. You see that famous picture of them carrying him in a chair. They took him to the local Catholic church, the closest one. They laid his body literally, didn't know what to do. They just laid his body literally on the altar. And um, Father George Rutler said to me, he said, you know, I stepped in the church, I saw Father Michael Judge's body laying on the altar, his blood running down the side of the altar, and I glanced up and I saw the crucifix above his body. And there, this body of the priest lying on the altar, and I thought to myself, that is the priesthood of Jesus Christ. Father Michael Judge is listed as the first death, the first one listed in those dead on that day, recorded, <coughs> recorded deaths. Uh, Father Michael Judge. It's such a shame that a few months later his beautiful sacrificial offering as a priest was overshadowed by the Boston Globe reports. But uh, he still stands out to me as a wonderful example of a, a beautiful priest who laid his life down on the altar uh, for the sake of souls. But all we priests are called to do. So again, have a beautiful day, prayerful day, and um, remember all those who have passed and let us look forward to the a future full of hope that even in the midst of darkness, in the midst of despair, there is always a God greater than all of it, the God of hope, the God of light. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Say, Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen.